Earth Rising is a cooperative game where you and up to five others must pull together your resources in a bid to transform the world and stave off very real ecological disasters. Struggled finding some jokes for this intro. Earth Rising has you taking on the mantle of eco-wary pioneers attempting to change practices that have been in place for decades to create a more sustainable, less apocalyptic -y Earth. And it's going to be Dicey Exploits' first ever reverse review. You see, well, after that, first and last, apparently. You see, I'm very set in my ways. I usually start off a review by saying this is how you play the game, perhaps throwing a little bit of self-deprecation to make it look better by proxy, before waxing philosophical about how its themes are integral to its modern times. I'm a jerk, I know it. But I can already tell by the theme of this, some of you are hovering over the X button and going, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I might want to back out of this one, Ben, but don't worry, I'm, I'm not going to sing again. Give me another minute, at least. The climate crisis is a very real and dire threat, a major hexa disaster with a fuse that no one can really determine the length of, and yet it's constantly giving us notifications it's there seemingly every day. It was tempting for me to put some b-roll footage of news reports there, but ultimately I don't think that helps. Every time you turn on the news to one of these disasters, the narrative is pushed in such a way that all you can really do is sit there and go, oh no. And when you turn to social media for answers, only the most extreme of solutions or outright denials are there to support you. So either you create an atmosphere of people just going, nah, I don't want anything to do with this because change is scary, though ultimately less scary than boiling change, or, like me, completely losing hope on the situation and just unaware of what to do about things. We can't make consistent positive change for the world unless we change the way we discuss this subject. And I had to mention this here because I worry that some people will look at the box of this and think of it as nothing but sanctimonious preaching. And I'm happy to say that Earth Rising is not that game. It takes a hopeful look at a sustainable future but also a realistic perspective on the fact that those changes may negatively affect the populace. And with that, I think we should start discussing the game. Uh, this is a prototype version for the Kickstarter, and by the way, everything's subject to change, including the art and uh, this stamp on the box, which just comes right off with a little bit of elbow grip. Did I do that? On a player's turn, they draw two cards and use four actions in an attempt to clear sectors of ecological strain, bringing them to the centre of the board and making one completely colourful pizza to win the game, rather than a cake that looks like it's been cut by a psychopath. But as one of your actions can be clearing four strain from burdens, surely it's easy to get a nice slice of salvation going. Except strain is added to these burdens at the end of every turn. Very unsustainable practice in a sector, one strain is added to its burdens. However, sustainable practices can nullify these effects, and if they outnumber unsustainable ones, they can actually remove strain. Trying to clear strain from all the burns on the board using just your four actions is like trying to harpoon a cloud and ultimately gets you no closer to winning the game. So it's simple, just build some sustainable practices and everyone will love you for it. Right? Wrong. Playing cards of certain sectors allows you to build sustainable practices in them. However, if an unsustainable practice is listed there and on the card, it is disbanded and removed from the board completely. So that's a good thing? Well yes, Captain Obvious can strike with industrial chemical farming bad, but there are still people profiteering from these practices. Every practice, be it sustainable or unsustainable, employs two meeple on the board, and if there aren't enough practices within the sector to employ them, then they're going to move into poverty and it's a lot harder to win hearts over if those hearts can't afford to keep pumping. And they are going to add even more strain. For every group of three meeple in poverty, one strain is added to each burden, starting with the player who ended their turn. And if Earth Rising were a Twitter thread, this would be the point where you let out an exacerbated and exhausted <coughs> However, there's some really clever things that Earth Rising does to stave off despair and keep you gunning for those sustainable goals. The first one of which is, if you don't do them, you'll lose. Pioneering stuff, I know. Did I mention that I was struggling to find funnies for this one? Secondly is with its aesthetics. It is always extremely rewarding to turn one of these grim, nasty burdens into a luscious, colourful segment of sector, especially if you can add more meeples to it. Although it might cause a different kind of analysis paralysis in some. Can I have my turn now? No, wait a minute, I'm just lining it up. 
There we go. No, wait. But most importantly, Earth Rising can give boosts to morale mechanically. Each player gets a roll with their own special ability that are fine at first, but for every sustainable practice in that player's sector, the ability is improved upon. Take the activist who can place a protest token on an unsustainable practice to allow it to be flipped over instead of disbanded when the relevant card is played. But for every single sustainable practice in the activist sector, they can add an additional protest token. You're not just putting forth sustainable practices to help the earth, you're planting your own skill trees, foraging for abilities and chopping down metaphors. It's great to see how these sustainable practices are not just helping you win, but helping build you up as a player and in turn as a human. Anyway, that's enough uplifting news for now. Here's a here's a bad card that'll screw up your takes and your games. Status quo strikes cards represent pushback on all the sustainable practices you've been implementing thus far. Based on the sector drawn, you draw one influence card per sustainable practice in that sector, and these can have a bevy of bad effects, from adding unsustainable practices, disbanding sustainable practices altogether, or adding more ecological strain to burdens that you didn't plan for. And this can have some serious ramifications. If it adds more strain than you were planning for, then an entire segment can go into recession and become a burden once again. Or it can even cause ecological collapse, preventing more sustainable practices being built in a sector and raising the temperature for the population in poverty, causing more strain to be added each and every turn. <laughs> These cards can be overly harsh sometimes, but I feel like they're necessary to get across the point of the game, because otherwise it would be overly patronising. A simple cleanup operation of a worldwide crisis just doesn't hit right. And the ways they scar the board? can sometimes be more brutal than stickers in a legacy game. It's horrible to see this thing you've built up over several turns just be regressed back, but also incredibly motivating to push forward and utilize your abilities as a team to fix it. It's only when a crisis occurs that you realize just how valuable an action is, and you endeavor to work as hard as you can to ensure that everyone else gets the most out of their turn. There's a great push and pull in every direction as you attempt to balance everything out even in aspects you don't have any control over. Sectors with no player are still in play, but require two cards to build sustainable practices on and disband unsustainable ones. You can regain all the cards in the discard pile into your draw pile to bring back cards to bring on sustainable practices, but doing that also shuffles in all the status quo cards that you've passed through. Whilst we can proudly say that we've won every game of Earth Rising we've played, it's always been on the closing years where we've realized we had to push everything into getting everything on the board and seeing just how well our engine runs by itself. But ultimately, when it comes down to a recommendation, I kind of have to factor in who you're gonna be playing it with and whether there's any alpha players amongst that group. Given the personal aspect of every sector, some players may wish to just focus on it, building up their own abilities and stating that that's what's best for the game. And considering some of these roles can be more important than others in some situations, that's a pretty easy argument for someone forceful to make. Ultimately, anyone who approaches with this lack of coordination completely misses the point of the entire game, and therefore also any discussion that happens after it. Discussion that the game is actively trying to encourage with its simplicity, which can also be a weakness in some areas. Earth Rising simplicity makes a very complex subject accessible, but it can feel like that simplicity can allow it to gloss over some subjects in certain instances. As all sustainable practices come onto the board in the exact same way, it can lead to some very odd comments in the game like, for an action I'm going to put a protest token on discrimination and then I'm going to flip that over to cultural diversity which has some serious I'm a special kind of white guy energy to it. The rulebook does give constant thematic explanations to everything which is great but when a game ends, it kind of just pushes you out the door and leaves you to your own devices. Earth Rising is great at starting a conversation, but ultimately it's up to you to continue it. And that's going to be a big factor about whether or not you should get this in. But I feel like I should stay. Flipping some of these around, I've genuinely been interested in some of the aspects, not just with a quick Google, but a full-fledged game. I really wish Stop, Drop and Roll would just build on this with its own little mini games based on energy conservation or the coal industry or the switch between nuclear energy. Something... I, I never thought I'd say before playing this. If you're looking to compare this with other co-ops, 
Well, with its four actions, constant hand management, and deadly little units adding up to Armageddon, there's certainly one we can compare it with. I realised I said in a video a while back that I wouldn't mention Pandemic a lot anymore. And I think I've mentioned it in every subsequent video since then. Um, but I promise, after the next one, I won't mention Pandemic a lot anymore. At least not for, for four months, which considering my production pipeline, that's one video. If you play these games because you adore the juggling puzzle of not knowing whether to go to a city filled with deadly cubes or hand over a vital resource to another player, you may find Earth Rising just a little bit lacking, especially considering the action film-esque flair of these. If, however, you really appreciate the hand management and love the coordination of giving resources to other players and receiving them, can't think of a better game than Earth Rising. Genuinely, because it focuses and zones in on that bureaucracy of attempting to save the world whilst working with one another. I've just sold this in possibly the most boring way possible. I am so sorry. Earth Rising is a smart, tense, and ultimately rewarding cooperative game that feels like a phenomenal first step to greater things. Its ability to make this crisis personal with positive reinforcement means it easily starts conversations with players during the game, ones that I can only hope extend beyond the 90 minute runtime and instead of being filled with despair, I have an essence of hope to them. Because I don't know about you, but I'm kind of sick of pandemics right now. At least for the next five versions. Years. I mean years. 